everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. We are out in the New Mexico desert somewhere in a little town. Now what ghost town would this be? Well, we are at the ghost town of Lake Valley, which was established in 1876. But we're standing outside the old school, which is an original building, and it was built in 1904. Let's take a look. Walk up the steps inside. Apple for the teacher. Uh, the dog ate it. And... Turned part of it into a museum. Is that the old school bell? The original school bell. Returned here in March 15th, 2000. Anonymous donor. Wonder if they took it. Got a bunch of old horseshoes, some pottery, books. These are the things I like. Old books. There's just something about them. The way they look. The stories they tell. Some more pottery. Some mining rocks. This was a mining area. More books here at the top. This original stove. That's really cool. Bunch of memorabilia here. Got a miner's hard hat. Saddle. Oh, and look at these old magazines. Ten cents, McCall, April nineteen thirty two. February 1932, March 1931, May 33, November 33, September 33, wow. Now we're going to go into the second room, which of course is made up to look like a schoolroom. Now this looks eerily similar to the White Oaks schoolhouse we were in. One thing we did notice about this room though is these desks appear to be facing the wrong way because the blackboard is back between the two pianos. All right, now this shot's gonna be a bit frustrating because of all the uh, the flash in here. I was just taking a look at the cursive writing on the board here. And the only other person that I know that writes like this is Andrea. I don't know anybody else that uses cursive anymore. Daly was once a stagecoach stop. It later became Lake Valley due to the ancient lake beds surrounding the area. Now in 1878, a guy by the name of George Lufton discovered silver here, and of course the town boomed to 4,000 people. With 4,000 residents, you had to have lots of general stores, boarding houses, there were three churches, 12 saloons, blacksmiths, two newspapers, and of course a stamp mill and a smelter and everything else that goes along with mining. The post office was opened, but it closed in 1954, making Lake Valley a ghost town. And the last resident 
died in 1974. So, you know, here I was mistaken earlier. I was very hasty in my decision to just speak out loud. I should have looked before I spoke. This is a piano. I got that correct. There's more of the blackboard, some seating there. This is an organ. Now, this organ was originally located in the town's chapel. And then back behind here, that's a place I probably would have spent a lot of time, the timeout corner. And here's another wood burner. Stow. Looks like they got two uh, buckets for carrying the ash out back here. And then some more blackboards, some colored photos. And there's an atlas of the United States just over there. Really neat old building. So leaving the schoolhouse, we've discovered a walking tour. Let's explore. One thing about this structure, point these out, these are railroad ties with this entire outside wall is made out of. They intended this to be a solid structure. Unfortunately, time had different plans. Walking up the trail, this is the first item that we've seen. The old car. There's an engine there. Don't know a whole lot about engines, but I do believe that's a straight six. Also, not sure if that came out of this vehicle or if it's just one that they found. No information about this car either. Don't know what it is. If it's part of the town or if they just found it on the road and brought it here. Either way, I like it. Let's continue on. Look at that pile of recycling. goes on and on right over the back. There's more piles and piles of old tins. Let's see if we can get a look here. It's a lot of cans. just as we suspected. Stay out, stay alive.
next item we're going to walk up to is this little house. It's an adobe house dating back to the 1920s. They did since change it into a chapel. You can see the cross up on top there. So we're going to believe we can walk inside. And the door is opening for us. Is there a ghost in here? Yeah, you see it's still made up as a chapel. Look at the old Texaco can down there. And chairs stacked up in here. Still well maintained. I wonder if this was a, uh, a wall here and made it two rooms looking at this. And they've taken the wall out. If you look along the ceiling, there's a ground Like, because there's one there, and then also that stuffed with a burlap sack. Now, that also could have been the uh, exhaust point for the, uh, the one, stove. One could have been a stove. One could have been a cooker. Yeah. A cooking stove and one a heating stove. Very true. On the steps of that old church now. And the trail we're going to be walking up that we have been walking and we're going to continue up. See along this way, that was the original railway. And apparently up over those hills, when we get to the water towers, that building there was where they sorted out the coal. You can see the notch in the hillside where the railway continued on. Let's go take a look. So here we have the two water towers or water containers that used to supply the old steam trains with water. Here is the old shed that they used to do the coal sorting. What a neat little building. You see just down here, that is where they would load the coal. You see there's a bunch of machining parts down here still. Corrugated metal. Look at those wheels. I would hold a belt on those. And the sprockets, the gearing. This must have been the coal chute. We'll continue up a little bit till the fence line because you can see the notch in the hillside where the train would continue on the end of the road for us. Just there, that's the notch. It goes down, then up. By 1883 the silver was all tapped out and a lot of the miners left and a fire destroyed the main street in 1895. However, bootleggers moved in and called this place home during Prohibition. 
Now during World War II the mines were reopened and manganese was mined which brought life back into the town. Let's take a look. See there at the water towers there's an intersection. Trail continues up to the right hand side so that's where we're going to go next. I've zoomed in a bit to try to give you a sense of scale. You see that tailings pile to the right, the building to the left, and directly in between those is the opening at it to the mine. That is immense. We wish we could get up to it, but everything's fenced off here because all of these structures and everything around here is still very unsafe to get to. So like they always say, stay out, stay alive. Now, although it was George Lufton that discovered silver here, it was a blacksmith by the name of John Levitt who discovered the mother load of all silver, and it was known as the bridal chamber. I'm not sure, but I believe that it's the bridal chamber that we're seeing behind me. So I've just had a quick look, and yes, this is the bridal chamber. Now, unfortunately, the bridal chamber collapsed, so the mine now is too dangerous to enter. Did you know 3.5 million ounces of silver was discovered in that one mine? So here's one of those signs saying what we always tell you guys. Stay out, stay alive. Because these are some of the dangers that can await inside of these mines. Hidden deep shafts, cave-ins of loose rock or decayed timbers, unsafe or broken ladders, bad air and poisonous gases, discarded explosives, poisonous snakes, or flooded tunnels. Now, another point, the bad air and poisonous gases. Somebody that explained this extremely well in a recent video is Gly from Abandoned and Forgotten Places when he's discovering the tungsten mines out in uh, Nevada. beautiful building right here was known as the Bella Hotel. A Mr. Martinez lived here for 90 years. He arrived in 1904 and passed away in 1994. He was the last resident of this town and this is a place he called home. This humble little home is where Justice of the Peace, Judge Keel, lived. Let's see if we can have a little nose inside, shall we? Uh, that's about as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. This lovely little abode was the Nolan residence. Mrs. Nolan, who lived here, became the dealer for the Continental Oil Company back in 1920. Her husband unfortunately passed away in 1937, but she stayed here until 1982 when she finally closed her eyes forever. This little building here in front of me had quite the history. It first was known to be a school. Later, it became a saloon, 
quite a difference there. After the saloon, it became a general store. And shortly after that, it became a petrol station. Now, it's abandoned. Look at the patina on those doors, that's gorgeous. Let's see if we can sneak a peek inside. Please pause the screen and read this. I think a lot of people need to take note. Enjoy, but do not destroy your American heritage. We find these safes out here all over the place sometimes, and it's amazing the spots that they end up. I guess that just goes to show you the power of the water sometimes. They get tossed around in the floods, flash floods, things like that, and they end up in spots just miles away from where they originally were. You think that thing's not heavy? Look at how big it is. Andrea's what, five, four and a half? Five, three and a half. Five, three and a half. And the <laughs> So that was a, a pretty significant sized safe. Now our final stop of the day is the cemetery. We're here above the ghost town now in the cemetery. We were looking for the grave of George Lupton. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find him. There's a lot of graves out here that uh, have no headstones, have no markers, and are just piles of, of rocks in the ground. Now, if you remember, George Lufton was the gentleman that discovered silver first here in 1878. Now, the one thing about George is he actually died penniless and is buried somewhere here in Lake Valley Cemetery. Another thing that you guys might not know, but is worth noting, Lake Valley is on BLM land which means it is owned by us. So they do ask for donations. That does help upkeep the town and everything like that. You don't have to give a lot or you could give a lot. Also, there are two caretakers here on site 24 seven. Now the town is closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but it's open the rest of the time. So that's gonna wrap up this video for Lake Valley Ghost Town. We hope you've enjoyed it. And also, we just want to mention um, that if you guys have any suggestions for us, we hope you enjoy our videos, but if there's something that you would like to see more of, something you would like to see less of, or if there's a location that you would like us to go and visit and explore, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And before we go, I have one more fun fact for you. Outlaw Black Jack Ketchum stashed a bag of gold somewhere here in Lake Valley and it's never been found. True story. Okay. Get out there. Get exploring. Go put a pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. Daily was once a stagecoach. Daily was once a stagecoach stop. Daily was once a stagecoach shop. <laughs> Daily was once a stagecoach. <laughs> sell seashells by the seashore. <clears throat>
Daily was once a stagecoach stop. That was before... <laughs> Daily was once a stagecoach shop. <laughs> God. God. Take five. <clears throat> All right, we come above the ghost town of... Lake Valley. We are here above the ghost town of Lake Valley in the cemetery. We were looking for the grave of one George Upton. Lupton. Lufton. 